we met not far from this building across campus um, a while ago. Gosh, I'm going to get the year wrong, but it was definitely sometime around 1995, yeah, 96, probably. at the UBC School of Music. And I was assigned to play for Tyler's voice lessons. And it's, uh, the All rest is history. <laughs> so we've been collaborating for 25 years. We learned Beethoven's Andi Fernagadipta for Tyler's graduation recital from UBC, I believe. And I think at that point in our education, like we'd been in song interpretation classes together, we were totally hooked on figuring out stories in German and this, at that point to us, a foreign language and diving into the poetry and feeling this sense of longing that goes with all of the poetry. And that really, you know, speaks to pretty much every 20 year old soul. And so we, we and the, the form of it is so remarkable. You know, it's a through composed song cycle. So there's six songs, but there's no stops, right? It just, it has these beautiful musical transitions. And as a pianist, that made a lot of sense to me. Um, and, and I think in terms of storytelling, it's, uh, it's unique. I mean, it was also groundbreaking and it's interesting that not too many composers ran with the idea of the through composed song cycle, but it's something that stands out in the repertoire. And so we learned that together and it became a piece that, that we've you know, really traveled with. We've um, revisited it in various stages of our career. Uh, and it's interesting to see how much we've grown as artists and how much we can now put into this piece that is so dear to us and that, ha that we've lived with for such a long time. Um, it's something very special. That's the gift of poetry, I think. They, as you come back to a text at different points in your life after having different experiences, maturing, um, maybe even forgetting, <laughs> coming back to it, reading it with fresh eyes, that the story renews itself continually. So I don't know, I can't say that what I experience in it now is any deeper necessarily than the way I felt it um, when we first performed it, but just that it reflects where I am on that day. And hopefully, right? Because you want that organic connection. Um, and it becomes suffocating if you look for depth where it's just already inherent. So um, I think it, it just changes. I mean, I, I think that I'm, my piano skills have shifted over the years. Maybe that's where I feel it more measurably, physically, right? Bodies learn to move more efficiently over time. Um, you, you know, strive to iron out bad habits over the years. Yeah. And um, so that's where I notice the biggest shifts. Yeah, and the technical ability of where you are, I mean, uh, the piece is not filled with youthful vigor anymore of a 18 to 20 year old, but it has this new, deeper understanding of, of uh, and especially in these times of, of COVID where you are separated by, from those you love, um, it becomes even more profound right now where you are, you are viewing the ones you love from a distance. And if you're not distant from them, you are putting them in danger. Uh, and it, you know, the life experience that you acquire, you can pour into these works of art. And they, you know, that's the wonderful thing about a, a timeless piece of art like Andi Fernagalipta is you can pour all of this life experience in and it will take it. And every time we do the piece, it's different every single time. And that's just, it's such a joy.